Dave Repture is starting a new phase of his life after settling a lawsuit against the aircraft manufacturer and the owner of that helicopter. That $100 million agreement will help cover tens and millions of medical costs. Now, his attorney says nothing can make up for Dave's horrific journey. Alan Janae spoke with Dave about his life now. At the park built at the spot of the crash that changed his life, Dave Repture and his wife Amanda have a little peace in their lives. We're glad to have a lot of things behind us, and um, we still kind of feel like we're in the fight of it. Dave is getting his 50th surgery. He still has open wounds from the burns that covered 90% of his body. But two and a half years after that terrible day, their daily thoughts are changing. I started thinking about getting back outdoors. I really want to go rafting and get some skates on and, uh, you know, play some hockey. And we're also trying to move home. Yeah, move home is a big one. We desperately want we to move We want to move home so badly. Home in the high country is a goal, but there's also a mission. I felt like I was safe. In the office of his attorney, Dave and Amanda talked about helicopter safety. I don't know if anything else out there in the, in the world that's still allowed to have these loopholes. That's because the 2013 model Airbus helicopter that crashed was still allowed to be built to standards from 1977, including the lack of a crash-resistant fuel system. A majority of helicopters are similar. For them, maybe they see it as an inconvenience or an expense, you know, but, you know, it has true consequences. Video of the crash shows what happened. Dave was thrown in his seat because of a faulty aftermarket seat attachment. Within seconds, fuel can be seen pouring out. It was like someone dumped a, a bucket of fluid right, right over my shoulders. It was a cold rush of fuel, just, or what I assumed was fuel, just right over my shoulders. And then there was fire. And I had to get out. Caught beneath the door, Dave pushed it free. He was already on fire. I remember trying to get away, and I remember the, you know, the, I could feel the heat and the flames. I just, I really didn't know where I was at. Fellow nurse Matt Bowe would escape with less injury. Pilot Patrick Mahaney got out last and died shortly after. Dave's miracle survival started with the people who helped at the scene right outside of the hospital. The pain was, the pain was excruciating. His airway, he knew, would be a big problem. I knew I was in trouble. You know, I, the first thing I think I told the crew that got me was uh, that I'd taken a couple big deep breaths in. A fellow nurse told Amanda what Dave said before they put him under. He said, tell Amanda that I love her. And those words carried me through for many months. For over five months, Dave was kept unconscious before he was awakened. Time and time again, during more than a year in the hospital, he nearly died. But Dave Repture beat all odds to emerge as a symbol of toughness and resilience. Dave and Amanda are now giving back, joining with nonprofits like the Dog Nation Hockey Foundation to help others, and telling their story of the transplant from now friend Matt Martinez to give Dave a functioning kidney. We want to work with burn survivors, organ donation. organ donation. Paying it forward is their theme, after all he's been through. This may, you know, sound a little weird, but in a way this is a gift. Dave Repture came through a severity of injury nobody is known to have survived. But not alone, and he won't go on alone. Just to help one person, and if that's all it is, and then that's, that's what makes it work. Alan Janae covering Colorado first. So when helicopter change has already happened, the FAA recently issued a directive now requiring a warning to go off if a switch is not in the proper position to help create lift, which was found to be a factor in that crash.